Right, welcome, welcome to the content revision series. Uh, this is on living with tectonic hazards, chapter two, core geography, KQ one. Why are some areas more prone to tectonic hazards? If you are taking elective geography, this is also relevant to you. Right, this chapter is what you will encounter as well. So in this chapter, one of the key things that we will need to be clear about to start off is that there are different types of hazards that you need to learn to identify and classify. Right? There are two main general categories of hazards that you will be looking at. One is the climatic hazards and the other one will be the tectonic hazards. Now, natural hazard is generally any naturally occurring event that will threaten human lives and cause damage to property. So it can be related to the climate, then you'll be classifying them as climatic hazards. And if it's related to tectonic action, where is a resultant of crustal plate movement, continental plate movement, oceanic plate movement, then you will be classified as uh, tectonic hazards. So when we're looking at it, basically your climatic hazards will cover hazards like tropical cyclones and floods, while your tectonic hazards will cover hazards like earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Now that we've got the idea of natural hazards and how to classify the two different general forms of hazards, um, let's move on to the fundamentals of tectonics. Okay, what happens under the crust and we will also look at the power of heat basically convection so this basically this topic here basically is a, a topic that revolves around the concept of heat okay heat and what happens when there is heat applied to a certain area and what will happen what will be the resultant forces at work now to better understand the tectonic concepts uh, we need to first look at the layering of the earth under the crust. Now the crust layer is the layer that we're standing on. Okay, It consists of all the tectonic plates, oceanic as well as continental plates, uh, which we'll talk a little bit more about later on. Uh, below the solid crust that we're standing on is actually a mantle. Mantle that is a flowing solid. It's a superheated mantle, it's, but it's, in a, it's not really in a liquid state. It's in the form of a flowing solid. And if you dig even deeper in, you will see a solid core. Solid core that is a superheated solid um, it, that is in the middle of the earth. So if you look at a cross section of a Ferrero Rocher that you do see in the picture here, right, you will see basically a cross section of the planet Earth. Okay, starting from the core in the most solid core, uh, flowing solid mantle, and topped off by the crust. Now on the crust itself, there are two types of plates that you can be looking at. One are the oceanic plates, which are a little denser okay, in density, and the continental plates, which are less dense density. Okay, but in terms of density, the denser ones are also the thinner ones. Okay, the oceanic plates are about 5 to 8 kilometers thick only, whereas continental plates can be a lot thicker. Okay, they can be up to 70 kilometers thick. Now, so what if we know about all these uh, plates and so on and so forth? If you come back to our Ferrero Rocher diagram, right, you look at where all these arrows are actually found. Uh, they are actually found in the mantle area. Now, why is it that in the mantle area, I have to use arrows here to illustrate movement? Because it's a flowing solid, like I told you earlier. So it's possible due to a difference in the heat of this layer, that there is actually movement of the layer itself. Now, wherever it's hotter will rise, okay? Convection theory in indicates this. So the area of the mantle that's nearer to the core, which is hotter than the mantle, will be heated up. So that area, the magma in the area will rise up. So this is uh, represented by the red arrows here. As they move up, they will reach the lowest layer of the crust, which is at this point a lot cooler than the area nearer to the core. So what happens when you are at this process, when this process is going on is as it moves up the, man the hot mantle from the area near the core moves towards the crust, it cools. Okay, as it cools, it pushes itself along the bottom of the crust okay, in the direction, the horizontal direction that you see, the blue arrows, they're moving horizontally. And this actually pushes the crust along in different directions as well. So there are places where it's diverging, moving aside, away from one another, and there are places where it's converging. Now, as these 
at these crustal boundaries right you will have all the different type of boundaries that you're looking at and when it's converging okay coming together you will see eventually because it's cooler magma now the cold cold material will sink hot material will rise cold material will sink so what will happen you will see the blue arrows that are coming down towards the core these are the cooler mantle material that is now pushing itself back down into the core to get reheated again now as this magma is moving below the crust okay in its various directions it's actually causing the crust itself to move okay it's exerting a force now when it converges and it pulls downwards that is the slap pull force that we're looking at so when we're talking about slap pull force we're actually looking or we're talking about this force that's exerted by the magma dragging the the broken parts of the crust into a subductive state as it moves near into the mantle again now if you look very carefully at this picture here you will see nine plates that have been circled out for you these are the nine big plates that you must know you must know where they are you must know the, how to spell them you must know uh, what are some of the specific landforms that are found on these plates now doesn't mean that the other landforms are away from this plate you don't need to know but it is useful and it's important that these are the compulsory nine that you must at the very least know so I will run through them very quickly with you. We start with the Pacific Plate. Pacific Plate, okay. If you look at this, this is a map that has been cut across on the Pacific Ocean. So uh, Pacific Plate will stretch on the left as well as the right of the map. Uh, you will move up to North American Plate, South American Plate. We will look at the Nazca Plate. We will need to know where African Plate is, Indian Plate, Eurasian Plate, the Philippine Plate, and the Australian Plate. Now, must you memorize the... In like you know when you were a lot younger like spelling style memorization no because as we move on if we talk about the different boundaries the different examples these are the plates that are involved in those examples so these are the nine plates that will form your what do we call it the foundation of your memory of your your example okay so these nine plates are the ones that you will remember you will have to reproduce as part of the examples now what kind of plate boundaries are we looking at then? There are only three main forms of plate boundaries that can occur. Okay, they can either converge, okay, where they come together and they destroy one one of them is destroyed in the process. They can diverge, they can move apart, and new land or new sea floor is formed, constructive boundary, or they can move sideways, okay? They shear past one another, they are transformed boundary, and they, there's no creation of uh, new land, neither is there subduction. So what must I know as a student uh, about these plate boundaries? You must know how to draw the specific diagrams to illustrate uh, or to explain how this boundary looks like, how uh, the boundary is actually used. You must be able to explain the processes that are occurring at that particular boundary, what is happening, uh, what movement is taking place, what is causing those movements, what are the resultant landforms. Okay, so I very importantly, you must be able to draw the diagram with annotations for all six. Now where can you find these six diagrams if you go uh, into the O-Level Content Playlist in Geography Singapore YouTube channel, you will find the six diagrams, okay, how to draw the six diagrams, they are individual videos on e how each one can be drawn, um, so if you are wondering how it can be drawn, you want a refresher, you can go there and take a look. So we will be looking at, I uh, will not be going into great detail on these six, oceanic, oceanic, continental, 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 oceanic convergence, as well as when you have divergent oceanic, divergent continental plates, and what happens at the transform boundary. Right, please go on and view all six videos that will show you how these diagrams are drawn. Um, for your own sake, I would, I would advise that you learn how to draw them. In cross your two year call job syllabus, you should have at least drawn these diagrams four times. Okay, either during exams, during your preparation, your revision, or in your own self study. In total, you must at least have drawn each of these diagrams four times. Okay, otherwise, you're not going to be able to commit them to memory. If you need to draw more, please go ahead and draw more. Right? Now, this sample diagram I pulled out from uh, somewhere on the World Wide Web here. Is, uh, is to show you what is the function of annotations. Now, many of you have no 
clarity on why we need to do annotations. Okay, annotations basically, right, because the diagrams you draw are two-dimensional diagrams and there's no movement, it's not a GIF file. So if, if you are going to use that to explain what is going on here, what will make your 2D diagram come alive? Basically, your annotations are the description that will, after the examiner reads or the, your reader reads the annotations, will, will enable this 2D diagram of yours to become a moving diagram. So what do you annotate? You annotate all the processes. Everything that is a process in your diagram, you do annotate. Now, if you look at the, the picture here, right, there's only one annotation. It is not complete. Huh? It's not complete. I will need to do a couple more annotations to make this diagram complete. So what I've annotated here is basically the subduction process when the oceanic crust meets the first layer of oceanic crust. Okay, this is oceanic oceanic convergence. So you do see the slightly denser piece of oceanic crust subducting. Okay, all I can do in terms of drawing the diagram is draw a couple of arrows moving downwards. But with this annotation, I can let the examiner know, oh, I understand the concept that it is subduction at this point. I further understand that when there's subduction, the oceanic crust, when it goes into the mantle, it will melt. Okay, and the other crustal plate that is being subducted against, that is slightly less dense, that is, that is being folded, that is fracturing, and what will happen when the when there's fracturing of that crust, when your magma will, will, will seep through and rise through what will be formed. So I'm actually using my annotations to make this come alive. Are there other things I need to annotate here? Of course, of course, I need to further on, uh, move on and talk about what happens. Why do I have an island arc forming? Okay, are there any other processes? What, why, what happens to the other piece of oceanic plate? Why is it that it doesn't subduct at the same time? Okay, so these are the other things I may have to annotate to complete my uh, diagram here. So once again, uh, KQ1 is a very short KQ. If you look at the content itself, uh, because the bulk of it is actually that six diagrams that you need to learn how to draw. For the diagrams, you need to remember which plates are in play, what are the names of the examples of the landforms that are resultant at these six diagrams. Okay, so if you're looking for content, uh, more information about how tectonic plates move, that will be 84 to 85 of your textbook. If you want more details about the six diagrams, it will be from 87 all the way to Okay, but I would like to draw your attention to if you're looking at the core job textbook, core job textbook. On page 90, there is a diagram of continental continental convergence. Do note that diagram is a little tricky. It shows subduction. Continental continental convergence does not have subduction. But the diagram in the textbook on page 90 shows ancient oceanic crust subducting. So if you are going to be using that diagram as a reference diagram, if you're going to draw that diagram, you better be sure you have ancient oceanic crust labelled or your diagram will be taken as wrong. Alright, having said that, uh, if you go and you want to look at a more reliable diagram, one that doesn't have this confusing portion over here, you can go to the O-Level o level Materials playlist on Geography Singapore and you will see the CC Convergence diagram. Alright, thank you for your attention. If you like to get uh, more updates quickly, subscribe to the channel. Okay, right, I'll see you soon for Gateway KQ2 of Living with tectonic hazards.